The concerns that currently dominate global geopolitics are the Ukraine crisis, the Indo-Pacific security situation, and the two-year depredation of the Wuhan virus. The complex Indo-Pacific situation came into focus during the pandemic. And China grew more adamant as the world struggled to contain the pandemic. The Quad and the Indo-Pacific architecture began to take off and develop substance in response. However, the ongoing long-drawn violent Ukraine crisis has changed some ground realities which will affect the Indo-Pacific region in more ways than one. While the West continues to isolate and punish Russia for the Ukraine conflict, Moscow is expanding its reach and influence elsewhere. Since the last February coup, Russia has used its military might to expand its influence in Myanmar by sponsoring junta operations. Moscow has supplied the military regime with drones, fighter jets, and armored vehicles. Russia has also thwarted statements at the United Nations Security Council addressing Myanmar's humanitarian crisis. The two governments are now united in their fight against Western sanctions, and they are finding more common ground. Myanmar's geographic location is a strategic advantage for Russia. Myanmar is located between India and China, with a coastline facing the Bay of Bengal, and has access to both the Indian Ocean and the maritime trade routes leading into the South China Sea. The support of Russia is vital to the Myanmar junta, which is fighting an attritional war against various rebels in the country's complex ethnic landscape. Nonetheless, in the face of guerrilla warfare from all directions, the military has struggled to establish control outside of provincial centers. A steady supply of weapons from Moscow is key to the junta's plans, and some experts believe it has exchanged raw materials with Russia in order to avoid sanctions. Also, Min Ong Lying sought assistance in establishing nuclear energy to help his war-ravaged economy during his most recent visit. But before Russia, after the military takeover, military junta has relied heavily on China. The military leaders also revived and expedited several projects under the Belt and Road Initiative that had been slashed by Aung San Suu Kyi. Though uncertain for the time being, but the development of a China-Russia axis to gain an Indo-Pacific foothold through Myanmar is expected. Nonetheless, the Myanmar military is wary of putting all of its eggs in Beijing's basket. Unlike Russia, which has only maintained military ties with the junta, China has armed and collaborated with rebel militias. Diversifying ties by moving closer to Moscow is a welcome prospect for the junta, and Russia has begun to respond positively. The Indo-Pacific region, extending from the east coast of Africa to the west coast of the American continent, is a huge swathe. Its core is now the center of gravity of international geopolitics and geoeconomics. Its major population centers are home to eight of the top 20 economies of the world. Major conflict areas and disaster zones lie in the Indo-Pacific region. While China has many interests in the Pacific Islands and has cultivated diplomatic and economic ties with them for decades, China has quietly sought a military outpost in the Pacific Islands for years. And after the Solomon Islands signed a security pact with Beijing in April, Kiribati may be considering a similar deal. Bougainville, a Papua New Guinea autonomous region, is aiming for independence by 2027. If Bougainville achieves greater autonomy, particularly control over its own defense, it, too, could become a target for China's strategic ambitions. A Chinese military presence in the Pacific Islands could hinder transit between Australia and the US, allow Beijing to increase its power projection in the second and third island chains and bring Chinese military firepower closer to Australian and US territory than ever before. Can the US and its allies prevent this from happening? What will India or USA or any other member of the Quad do? If the junta is successful in Myanmar with Russia's help, it will strengthen Putin's hand in a region where he already has some leverage. The same scenario could play out if China seeks a forcible foothold in Bhutan, Nepal or even Myanmar. If the Biden administration is serious about achieving its Indo-Pacific objectives, it must more purposefully counter the China-Russia axis in the Indo-Pacific region and Russia's stealthy expansion of power in Myanmar. A good starting point would be to engage with the opposition more proactively and assist in meeting its needs. 
sanctioning, as demonstrated by the Ukraine war, is inefficient. The Ukrainian conflict is the first in which Russia has openly used nuclear weapons to deter the United States and NATO from intervening in the war. The nuclear threat was combined with conventional and hypersonic weapons. South Korea and Japan are surrounded by nuclear weapons from China, North Korea, and Russia, and the Ukraine situation heightened the nuclear debate in both of these countries. And many South Koreans believe that relying on the US in a nuclear situation is dangerous and that they could end up like Ukraine.